Welcome to the part two of my Jadam series, where in this video, this is going to be the Jadam wedding agent, which is basically a surfactant or some sort of soapy substance in order to get these pests. And this is what it looks like. Let's go. What's going on my plant peoples? I am the ADHD gardener where I use gardening houseplants and humor as a form of mental health therapy. And welcome to part two where we're gonna be making Freddy's appearance again. In case you're wondering what that is, that was from my dad's videos from the winter time. He had that in his basement where we were setting up and growing a lot of food in our basement. Basically he just gave it to me because his butt is going to Puerto Rico and he's leaving me high and dry for the winter time. Fun, fun, fun. So he gave me his materials in case I wanted to use that and incorporate that in my garden or even inside of my home. We're going to be making Jadam Wedding Agent or JWA and this stuff is fantastic because technically you can even use this one by itself. This is a surfactant which is basically a soapy substance that is used to kind of release or lower the surface tension of our plants. And that's what we use to base all of our pesticides or any kind of sprays that you use in your garden is always mixed in with a surfactant and that's what we're going to be making. The beautiful thing about this is that you can actually use this by itself. The part one that I did when I made the JS, the Jadam Sulfur, that sulfur needed to be mixed with this in order to stick onto the plant. Because if you were to spray the sulfur by itself, it would kind of like mess up the plant. You need something like a surfactant or soapy substance in order for it to kind of coat and stick onto the plant. And this is what we're going to be making today. Freddie, I love you too. What's awesome about the JWA or the Jadam Wedding Agent is that technically you only need to use water with this, soft water. This solution works on aphids and mites and spider mites or mites in general in its early stage. And that's basically fantastic because we're going to be suffocating the crap out of those suckers. If you have any other bugs or pests that's not going to be controlled with just this, stay tuned for my upcoming videos in this Jadam series where I mix all of them together. The JS, the JWA, and another future upcoming video, I'm going to be making the JHS. Stay tuned for that one. The recipe that I'm using is going to be put on the screen right here. I'm going to be making 10 liters or 2.64 gallons of this surfactant JWA. My chickens want to be all loud and whatnot. Okay, the first ingredient, what we're going to be using is soft water. Now you have two options when it comes to soft water. One of them is going to be distilled water. You can buy that at the stores or you can use rainwater if you collect it. I just so happen to be collecting my rainwater, so I'm going to be using that. Yo, that chicken is so loud, bro. She's in her nesting box right now. So whenever she's in her nesting box, she is ridiculously loud and has to cackle before while she's dropping her eggs. I have no idea. The first thing you're gonna be doing is measuring out your potassium hydroxide. That's the only chemical that you're gonna need to buy. I will drop a link down in the website that I went to go buy it. No promo, no nothing. It's just where you can find your chemicals. Also, you're gonna be needing soft water. Now, soft water, you have two options. You're going to be using distilled water or rainwater. If you catch your own rainwater, that's what I'm going to be using. And that's basically it. All right, you are not going to smell this. This is going to be giving off a lot of fumes. You're also going to need a heat resistant bucket or container in order to make this all happen. We are going through a little chemical reaction here again with the potassium hydroxide. If you have a heat resistant bucket, fantastic. If you do not have one and you can't uh, buy one, then you can use stainless steel. And that's what I'm gonna be using because I cook a lot and I got a lot of pots. Ooh, I can smell it. Again. Smell it? Yeah, it's it's very potent, but we gotta keep stirring a little. I got you. I smell. Got you. That's why we're doing it outside. We're gonna keep stirring until all of the flakes have melted. You're adding 1.8 liters of canola oil. This is where the paint mixer drill comes into play because once you put in all your canola oil that you need for your recipe, based on how much you're gonna be making, this is where we need to mix and mix and drill and mix some more because this is gonna be a process. I wanna say this is gonna take you at least 24 hours to make this happen. And now we drill. Oh, it says the blade must be very clean. This will not, this is oh, not, this boy. is not clean at all. Slower drill prolongs the mixing time. If you use a container that's too wide, the depth will be shallow and the liquid can splash while mixed drilling, which is what's happening right here. Make sure you have gloves and safety goggles. Color keeps changing and viscosity will keep changing. Being that this pot is so wide, that's what's happening. But the splashes and that can burn your skin. In a few minutes and you can already check out the color difference look at that consistency it looks like thin mayonnaise 
All right, now there were two videos on YouTube. One of them had it sitting and resting for about three to four days. The other person just jumped right in on it and just kind of added the water and skipped the waiting of the few days. So I'm not really sure which one I'm gonna go for. I mean, Young Sung Show said wait three days, so I'm gonna wait three days. Ew, yeah, that's exactly what it's supposed to look like. That looks weird. Looks like the... Lotion. Yeah. Dirty lotion. Sorry guys, I must have deleted the video clip, but either way, after it gets to a thick mayonnaise like this, you're going to put a lid on it and you're going to forget about it between one to three days, depending on what you choose and how much time you have. After it's been that many days, you're going to take off the lid and it's going to look like hard butter. So after this, you're going to add the remaining amount of water to that butter and you're going to break it up with that paint drill. Just keep stirring and stirring until it starts to get liquefied. It's been 24 hours. I moved all this liquid into a different pot because I needed the other one. There was no problem with that. And as you see, it's already been liquefied a lot. And all I'm going to do is just kind of stir this all over again. I've been mixing this for a few more minutes and then you can see already that it's like super foamy. But it's not as much foam as you think because the liquid is just like right there. See? And also, I had to be very, very careful and slowly drill this because I just kind of the liquid is right up up to the top of this so I have to be very careful but I'm gonna spin this for a few more minutes and then I'm gonna let it settle for like another hour and then come back and then drill it and spin it again all right it's been about an hour there's a lot of foam on here if you watch his original video on how to make this he must have stirred this at least five to six times at ten minutes at a time with an hour in between each but you know my patience was kinda of like wearing a little on the thin side Lots of mixing later. All right, so um, the fuzz, you know, the foam kind of dissipated a little bit. But I've been here for like a long time already. So I didn't get a chance to get back to this yesterday. So this is the next day, well, following day, and this is what it looks like. Ooh, it's not exactly clear because it still needs more mixing, but we're definitely getting there because it looks like all the pieces have been melted already. So we're just going to need to be mixing this a little bit more, settling it, and then mixing it one more time until we get this clear consistency or the clearness that you can see through it, or at least for the most part. Did it look like this in the video? I don't remember. It was clear in the video. Well, once it dropped here, it was clear. Yeah, you also haven't been mixing it for 10 minutes at a time. Uh, no, I have not. Because it's boring. That's why you're mixing it. Yeah, stop the mix from what I'm doing. Well, giving credit to you is that you look incredibly handsome for the camera, so, yeah. Yeah, flattery will get you nowhere. Oh, <laughs> it will get me far. Alrighty, I took off the lid, and as you see, it's looking as clear as it's going to get. Alright, it does have some tinge to it. Now I'm wondering, is it because I used a really shitty uh, paint, you know, paint thingy that still had leftover paint? But that paint was white, so I can't see that that is being the major problem. But I think this is ready to rock and roll. I'm just going to store these away, being that there was no special um, requirements for this one. I just stored it in a regular old gallon bottle. And same thing with over here, I just got to find a lid for it, and that's how I'm going to be storing it. This actually came out darker than Young Sung Cho's version of it. His version was a lot lighter. So I was kind of concerned about the, the color of this. So I wrote down and commented on his video of him making the GWA. And he said this was just fine. I could still use this, no problem. This must have just aged a lot faster given the fact that when I was making this, it was like 80 degrees outside. That could play a factor, but it's okay. It's still usable and it's still good. And trust me, it is soapy. Time to mix up this solution in a one liter spray bottle. I'm using my rainwater and I'm going to be mixing in 30 ml of the JWA. You can start off with 10 ml first and see how that goes, but I have a feeling that I may need a little more of the wetting agent in order to really stick onto the plants, so I'm going to be using 30 ml for one liter.
I really hope you enjoyed this video and you got some good information out of it. Let me know down in the comments below. Have you tried this before? Have you, uh, are you planning on making this? Because I really want to, you know, I really think that this is going to be a fantastic solution to a lot of pest problems. If you did enjoy this video and you want to show me some love, then don't forget to smash that like button. I really appreciate it. Also, if you haven't already, then consider subscribing. I drop a video twice a week. You can also catch me on Facebook and Instagram. I'm on there all the time. And if you want to consider donating to this channel and make this channel possible and make it happen, then I do have a PayPal link. I'll drop that in the description box below. And until the next time, you guys, when you and me both are going to be growing our happiness one plant at a time, one day at a time, I'll check you out later in the next episode. Peace and love.